All right, Crystal, what's on your radar? Well, yesterday was another rough day on Wall Street with the Dow ending the day down nearly 600 points. In percentage terms, this has now been the second worst month ever on record with the stock index having given up all of its Trump era gains. Trump's slow reaction to the coronavirus pandemic was reportedly over concerns about the stock market. And so shouldn't be surprised to see him already preparing to throw the towel in on social distancing, quarantines, and other mitigation techniques as the jaw-dropping sell-off continues. He's also likely got more than a few Wall Street and corporate ghouls whispering in his ear. Various star players in the 2008 crash seem to have taken up the, screw it, let's just all get coronavirus talking points. Lloyd Blankfein offered similar thoughts, saying, extreme measures to flatten the virus curve is sensible for a time to stretch out the strain on health infrastructure, but crushing the economy, jobs, and morale is also a health issue and beyond. Within a very few weeks, let those with a lower risk to the disease return to work. Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick tells us that many of our elders would gladly risk death to protect the American economy. As a senior citizen, uh, are you willing to take a chance on your survival in exchange for keeping the America that all America loves for your children and grandchildren? And if that's the exchange, I'm all in. Um, and that doesn't make me noble or brave or anything like that. I just think there are lots of grandparents out there in this country, like me, I have six grandchildren, that what we all care about and what we love more than anything are those children. And I want to you know, live smart and, uh, and, and see through this, but I don't want the whole country to be sacrificed uh, and, I, and that's what I see. I've talked to hundreds of people, Tucker, in just in the last week, and uh, making calls all the time. And, and everyone says pretty much the same thing, that we can't lose our whole country. We, we're having an economic collapse. I'm also a small businessman. I understand it. And I talk with business people all the time, Tucker. And, and I'm so, my, I'm just, my heart is lifted tonight by what I heard the president say, because we can do more than you know, one thing at a time. We can do two things. So, you know, my message is that um, uh, let's get back to work. Let's get back to living. Let's be smart about it. Uh, and those of us who are 70 plus, we'll, we'll take care of ourselves, but don't sacrifice the country. Mommy, what happened to Grandma? Well, Timmy, she died so that the S&P 500 wouldn't fall below its 90-day moving average. <laughs> Which stage of capitalism is it where we sacrifice our elders for the good of the stock market? Now, let's be clear. These people only care about the drop in their stock portfolios and their inability to have their every whim and desire met at the second which it occurs to them. While working America would head back out to be on the front lines interacting with the potentially infected, these folks, they'd be just fine. Costed in their mansions with their concierge, in-home medical services, and the assurance that comes with wealth and power of knowing that if you are the one who needs a test or needs a ventilator, you're going to get it. Or maybe the ability to fly to wherever the pandemic has already been effectively quashed. But even though it is patently irresponsible, and even though intellectually we know that fighting the virus and restoring the economy go hand in hand, I also fully get why many working people will respond to Trump's statement that we can't let the cure be worse than the disease. Sagar and I both know people and are seeing your messages daily about losing your jobs, about staring down the barrel of rent and car notes and basic necessities, wondering if you might just prefer risking it with coronavirus kids home from school going without meals, new parents who should be celebrating and in bliss with a new baby, instead wondering how they can possibly provide for their child now that they're suddenly out of a job. The pain is deep and it is real. We see you, we really do. But the truth is what DC and Wall Street are offering is a false choice. They would have you believe that the only options are to starve or to take your chances with coronavirus. They'd have you believe that's the only choice. Even as trillions were instantly freed up to feed the stock in the bond markets, they would have you believe that your only choice is starve or coronavirus, even as they move heaven and earth to make sure that essential national industry of cruise lines is made whole. It's bullshit. And we know it's bullshit because we can look around the world and see that while working people in other countries are, yes, also experiencing pain, it is not nearly the absolute calamity that is facing Americans right now. Country after country has responded with programs to make sure that payrolls are maintained. Most telling to me was a comment from a coffee shop manager in Copenhagen. He told the Times that while he feared the uncertainty, he never considered that the government might allow so many workers to fall into poverty. We didn't come to the thought that, OK, maybe we'll be on the street, he said. It never occurred to Sebastian that his government would just let him starve and be evicted. 
But I can promise you, it has occurred to millions upon millions of Americans. Manhattan restaurant worker Jose Luis Candiet, who has a new baby girl at home, told The Times, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, my God. What we are missing is that the justifiable economic terror of Jose and so many like him isn't really because of the pandemic. It's because of our government's utter failure to respond with any sort of reassurance or certainty that while, yes, there may be pain, we are not going to allow your life to be destroyed in the name of public health. What the Wall Street ghouls and Trump and his right-wing sycophants want you to believe is that listening to the sound advice of public health officials necessarily means economic calamity for workers. It doesn't. If they put half as much time and attention and care into bailing out workers as they do into the stock market, we'd all be able to get through this just fine. But, and here's the catch, all those measures for working America, they may give away the game that the government actually can effectively secure economic rights for our citizens. And crucially, all those worker protections and supports might not actually do that much to boost the stock market since people would still be at home, not shopping or flying or staying in hotels or gambling in casinos. The only thing that gets the stock market going again is for things to go back to normal. That's why these people aren't calling for bigger worker packages. They're calling for everyone to get back in the game, risking their health and taking their chances that they'll be one of the lucky ones who gets the ventilator when they fall ill, all for the sake of getting that stock market back up. Now, as I said last week, we do, in fact, need workers right now. We need a care worker surge. We need a sanitation worker surge. There is a lot of work to be done to support our most vulnerable communities, and the federal government should step in with a modern Works Progress Administration to help train and coordinate that work. But the idea that we can just decide to end the quarantine and the economy is just going to jump right back up before we've actually defeated this virus is fool's gold. The only pro-worker position is to fight for the provisions that we've talked about on this show, the stability of share sizable monthly payments, the peace of mind of debt payment suspension so you can know that you won't be evicted, and you're not going to have your credit destroyed, payroll support to keep as many people as possible attached to their jobs, universal health care so that you can know if you and yours need care, it will be there for you. Now, I understand the siren song of let's just go back to work, but it only leads to the worst of all worlds potentially millions of unnecessary deaths and prolonged economic pain. Mm. And Sagar, that's the thing. They want to create this choice like, oh, All here's right. the only options. You can starve or you can risk dying from coronavirus. And it's BS. It's a failure of imagination. And, you know, it's almost like a sweet sentiment from Dan Patrick, right? Because he's like, I'm a grandparent. I don't want to ruin my kids' lives. And it's like, you know what, Dan? Your grandkids, they need you. And the government can only – it's like – if you have to choose between grandpa and lost wages, the government can't replace grandpa. They can release the lost wages. They can replace lost wages. We can wages. fight over that. Yeah. We can fight for all of that. We can make sure that business owners don't kill themselves and, don't, and go under and because we can make them whole, but we can't Trump actually, take that away. To his credit, yeah. he expressed this really well at one yeah, point. He, he said something to the effect of, look, we can't get the lives back. We can get the economy back. We can't get the lives back. Everything else we can bring back, and that's true. We have the power, and we can tr print a trillion-dollar coin tomorrow. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're printing trillions of dollars well, to, bo and, to buoy the stock market. And that market. was something that Trump actually said yesterday, which he was like, look, you guys need to remember in recessions, drug use goes up, suicide goes up. A lot of people kill themselves because of recessions. But again, they only kill themselves because of economic pain. Now, look, no matter what we do, we could pay $30 trillion. There's still going to be economic pain. There's going to be pain. Because you can't recreate the, you know, what it means in order to have work and to have a business and all that, something that's your own. I mean, getting a payment in the check, that's not going to do anything. But what we can do is stop gap it while we get a hold on it. And again, what actually bothers me the most about many of the people, because this has been a big thing on the right that's been, kind of exploded in coming days, yeah. is the failure of doing the responsible thing to say, because I think both of us, I want people to go back to work and I want to create a new society. But with that, I know that if we're going to send people back to work, that means we need to have universal testing. That means we need to have aggressive contact tracing. That means we need to have a whole host of measures in place right now to ensure that we have the capacity, the literal state capacity, right. to do what Taiwan and South Korea and Singapore were able to do to flatten their curves. I don't want a single person going back to work until we can do that. And that's the sheer irresponsibility, is that so many of these people 
people. What they really, what it seems to boil down to is that they hate bailouts more than they hate the idea of millions of people getting sick. And that's disgusting to me. Yeah. Because you're going to have massive government power one way or the other. We're going to have to do a bailout and we're going to need to do one of the greatest marshallings of governments in the history of the United States just to be able to get people back to work, to make sure that you, everybody can walk around and be safe. I mean, right now in South Korea, they take your temperature before you go into a restaurant. Right. That's what it's going to have to look like. It just is. Yeah. And that's okay until we have a vaccine. That's okay. And, yeah. and I really do get, look, if people are faced with that choice of like, I can either get foreclosed on or yeah. get evicted. And I'm going to work. I get it. Look, yeah. Then I'll, I'll take my chances. I'll go to work. But it is not, that is not where we have to be. That is not a necessary choice. Washington could ease the blow so that people could stay safe, stay healthy. Look, let's not downplay this. We're talking about potentially millions of lives that are at stake now. And by the way, even if you said, let's all go back to work, a lot of people who are staying home right yeah, now, it's not because the federal government told them to. I it's because they want to stay safe. Yeah. It's because they want to keep their family safe. It's because they want to do the responsible thing. So the idea that we can just snap our fingers and everything and go back and it'll be all fine, it's Also, it's you know foolish. what's really bad for the economy? Like half a million people with lung, lung problems for the rest of their life might be a problem. Yeah, anyway. indeed. All right, next up on Rising, Dr. Abdul El-Sayed is going to join us to talk about Trump's pivot on coronavirus concerns. More next. 